Today, we will talk about quantitative content analysis. First, I will introduce the methodology by offering a clear definition. Then I will walk you through the most important things to look out for when utilizing content analysis. And lastly, I will point out the advantages and the limitations of the method. Research methods can be qualitative or quantitative, depending on the type of data they intend to analyze. Qualitative research attempts to create a sense of the larger realm of human relationships, Berman says, by examining texts. Research carried out this way is often considered political, interpretive, and theoretical. Quantitative research, on the other hand, is often thought to be more authentic and important. It collects data in a numerical way to analyze trends, theories, and notions by analyzing the relations of variables. Content analysis is one of the most popular quantitative research methodologies in the media and communication studies due to its ability to measure actual human behavior. Kerlinger indicates that content analysis is applicable to materials that are already available, such as newspapers, online content, magazines or films. Content extracted this way may be examined in the framing experiment. There are a number of useful definitions offered for content analysis but George Zito's one may help clarify what this actual method means. Content analysis may be defined as a methodology, he says, by which the researcher seeks to determine the manifest content of written, spoken or published communication by a systematic, objective and quantitative analysis. Since any written communication is produced by a communicator, the intention of a communicator may be the object of our research. CETO enlarges the sphere of content analysis to all forms of communication, from the personal to the mass-mediated. Like with many other research methodologies, most of us do try to do a personalized form of content analysis all the time, of what people say to us or what we read in papers or magazine. We're always searching for meanings and trying to figure out why people do things and what their actions actually mean. But content analysis is different from our attempts to make sense of a communication in that content analysis is much more systematic and objective. It is quantitative, of course. It measures and counts certain things. Content analysis are the most reliable when the researcher applies a historical or a comparative perspective or both simultaneously. That is to study material of a different times or a different place respectively. For instance, if we say there were 20 acts of violence per hour on British television in 2000, that on its own would not say much to us, would it? But if we were to compare this data with the amount of violence occurring in British television in 2010, or the amount of violence occurring per hour on American TV in 2000, we would have given more perspective to the data. More often than not, of course, we do not have scope nor the time to do this in a student dissertation, but then it is a crucial limitation which needs to be pointed out in our works. Defining terms in content analysis is also very important. Scholars tend to use operational definitions, and unlike dictionary definitions or constitutive definitions that are general and abstract, operational definitions require elaboration on the interpretation of concepts. A definition should not be too broad or too narrow either, as findings can be dismissed or rejected as being irrelevant if an adequate definition isn't available. Further, establishing a coding process before the content analysis is carried out is very crucial so that others can replicate the research and test its reliability. Content analysis focuses on the manifest content only, which allows only explicit meaning to be collected while, while avoiding contextual meaning that would contribute to a more qualitative approach. With other words, it only accounts the number of occasions when a particular action, behavior or word occurs and it codes those. The methodology is popular because it's unobtrusive, relatively inexpensive, it can deal with current events and topics of present day interest. It uses material that is relatively easy and obtain and work with. And it also yields data that can be quantified easily. These are very attractive attributes for a student dissertation. However, there are a number of challenges and limitations we need to consider before doing content analysis. Some claim simply quantifying data does not account the significance of the analyzed matter and accounting the frequency of a particular notion itself is not enough to reliably arrive to a conclusion. Utilizing a qualitative and a quantitative methodology simultaneously, some say, may offer a solution to this problem. Benson and Wood in 2005 said that content analysis fails to offer systematic and reliable investigation of the connection between frames and speakers when employed to establish news coverage frames. Further, 
Berger believes it may be too difficult to find a representative sample and determining measurable coding units when using content analysis can be also very challenging. Lastly, obtaining coding reliability that would allow others to replicate the study may also be a difficulty. Thank you for watching. I hope this video will help you with your own project. Good luck and check out all the other videos too.